So we've got this problem, right? And that is that the world is very complex and we're trying to make maps of it. And this example, for instance, how would we even begin to map all of the buildings in this city? Or how would we begin to uh, map, let's say, the subway system of the city, if there was one, um, or the weather, or the pollution? Well, that's a little complex and we'll, we'll work up to that. But first, let's talk about a simpler situation. This river, this is a picture I took from Central Maine Power. It's a online, you can Google search uh, the forks in Maine, um, and you'll find that this is the Kennebec River and the Dead River. And what I want to ask you is, again, do we consider this a map right here? And you would probably say no at this point if you watched the last video. And yes, it is a it is a, an image, but I would say it's not a map. And this the reason for that is that it would be very difficult for us to line up any other information with this one piece of data. So the key to maps is being able to locate different pieces of data and put them on top of each other so that we can compare them. So there might be a road, for instance, running along this little ridge here. You can kind of see where there might be um, you know, the inklings of some kind of road or something. So in order to figure that out, we have to represent the features in the landscape in a different way, kind of in a system. And so there are a couple of ways of doing that, but first I want to uh, talk about another example. And we've got this one thing where we want to know where different objects are in the landscape. Where is the road? Where is the river? You know, where, um, where are, is another river joining this river? But then we've got another kind of problem, and that is that sometimes we want to know, okay, not just where is, let's say, the island or the lake, but what is the elevation at every single point between the mountaintop down to the lake, and then maybe even all the way down to the ocean, because this lake might be um, a few hundred feet above sea level, right? So, it gets more complicated than just where are things. It becomes where are things in relation to other things and how do we keep track of them? The other thing we might want to know instead of elevation would be what is the temperature, right? Between um, any point on the entire, in the, in the entire landscape. So how do we represent what we'll start to call um, discrete data, which are objects? and continuous data, which are fields, and they're kind of regions that we want to know something about at every single point. So to make this a little bit more manageable in our brains, let's move on um, and represent that river. So to represent that river, which we'll call an object because it's either a river or it's not a river. It's, we want to know where it is and where it's not. Um, this is discrete data, and there's a couple ways you know, we can represent that. We can represent that in an image where every pixel in this image has a geographic location, right, in a coordinate system. And then we can represent the, the river with a whole set of ones, perhaps, and then maybe the other river that joins it has twos, right? So what's cool about GIS is that we can, we can add these attributes. So no longer is this just river and not river, uh, river and not river. This is river number one and river number two, and then every place that's zero is not a river. There's another way we can represent this, and this is would be drawing lines. We can, uh, instead of trying to represent every single location with a value, we could just say, okay, here is a point and a line, 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 and we can use points and lines and polygons to just draw kind of on the landscape and say this is where things are and give geographic coordinates for every single vertice, uh, or vertex, I guess you'd say. And these two models are called raster. The upper version here is called raster, and the bottom one is called vector. So what about the other example um, of temperature or um, elevation? And that's what we call field or kind of continuous data. So this is the idea that maybe there is something that we can measure at any location on the entire 
uh, landscape, everywhere has a temperature. So this type of data is called continuous data. And there are, again, a couple of ways to represent it. We could use a raster so that every value in the raster has a geographic location and just records the value. So maybe this is rainfall or something instead of temperature or elevation. But um, start to get in your mind that there are these two different types, right? There are kind of objects that we're mapping, river, building, you know, town boundary, things like that. And then there are um, these fields, and they are more like elevation or temperature or rainfall, things like that. And there's also a vector way we can represent that. Uh, you'll excuse the pretty poor diagram here, but um, this, you know, usually when we try to represent fields with vector, we use contours or what are called iso lines, where lines represent areas where everything is the same. And then in our minds, we, we kind of interpolate between the high and the low. And we get the same kind of feel for a field, even though we're only representing it with a series of lines. So um, this isn't the only way, but this is kind of the, these are, these are the kind of major um, ways that we would use to represent the Earth. So for each instance, either type of data model works. Vector or raster both work for object, and vector or raster both work for field. Raster tends to do a better job at showing field data, whereas vector tends to do a better job at showing object types of data. Um, that's not always true, but um, kind of in general. Let's look at a curious kind of example. Now, what, if I was to tell you this is land cover, meaning, or vegetation, um, would you call this field or continuous data? Well, it's a little confusing because it's a little on the edge. It's, it is testable everywhere, but each place is not, it's not a gradient, right? Um, there are places that are categorized as desert, and there are places that are categorized as forest, and they're either that or they're not. So even though you can test it everywhere, it's not a gradient from, you know, let's say six inches of rainfall to 5.7 to 5.3 to 5.2. So it's a little, you know, the, the walls kind of disintegrate a little bit here. But let's zoom in and see how this is being represented. So if we zoom in again, we'll see, aha, this is a raster data set. So what that means is that even though you're familiar with aerial images being rasters, this is a data set that is raster in which the pixels are not representing the color that we see from the sky, but the color represents a number, um, probably an integer in this case, in which let's say this is a floodplain it might be one, 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 one. And then if this is, um, you know, step or a field, then this might be two, 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 two. The colors are arbitrary, right? But the, the values store a category instead of the what they look like on the ground. So if we were to see an aerial image of this, we might see different colored pixels based on what it looks like from the air. But somebody has taken that aerial image and created a raster data set that has um, kind of categorical values. So this could be represented by vector as well. And vector just means that there are polygons and lines that kind of outline these categories. And although vector looks, as we say, more corrector, you can tell by the grammar that just because vector looks more crisp doesn't mean it's necessarily that much more correct. Um, you can see all of the vertices and that's kind of a, an indication of, of the level of the data, right? So if we see all of these twists and turns and it looks a little bubbly, well, that's probably because the vector has been traced around an aerial image. So just in general, 
Keep in mind that although these can be stored as raster or vector, neither one is necessarily better in this case. Depending, It all depends on how we want to use the data. So we'll get into that um, further on.